Typical. Man. What's up, well, everybody? Welcome to the Laser Source Podcast, the number one podcast if you like eating at night. Today we have a very special. Yeah, Matt doesn't do that. We have a very special <laughs> guest with us. It's Katie Devlin. Uh, she joined us on our LBX panel, which we still haven't published, but it's okay. You don't have to wait for Katie. We've got her here with us tonight. How are you doing, Katie? I am excellent. It's You've been a got... long day, but I'm good to yeah. go. You're busy. How long have you been like actively doing stuff in like laser communities? About a little over three years at this point. A little over three years. Yeah. Three point eight thousand subscribers on YouTube with just forty six videos. That's a lot of subs for forty six videos. So Thanks. those have got to be rocking for sure. Three point five thousand on Instagram. I've got. There's. Oh my God. Your list just keeps going. There's so much stuff I want to ask you about. <laughs> um. So, but before I, before I start jumping into stuff, um, yep. why don't you, what would you tell people your deal is, you know, like what's your elevator pitch for uh, things Katie makes and, and all that jazz? Sure. Well, I think one of the things that when I started working with lasers, I started with a Glowforge because it was like you, if you had a cricket, you basically got blasted with Glowforge ads and mm. I wasn't familiar with lasers at all. Just that didn't exist in my mind. But when I found, you know, Facebook groups and all those things, the thing that made like breaks my heart is when I see people who are like, I haven't taken my laser out of the box or mm -hmm. my rotary has been in the box for two years because I'm terrified to use it. So my entire goal is to make things simple so that people will use the tools that they have. No one wants a $10,000 paperweight. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And it's not as scary as it may seem. And so I like to work through really, you know, things that might seem basic to people who've been doing this for a while, but they're really the step-by-step -step projects or trainings or learning to make it so that you know your laser. Like you yeah. shouldn't have to go look in 10,000 Facebook groups to figure out what you know, settings you need for speed and power for your product. You should be able to do that. And that should be one of the first things you learn. So right. I am an educator first and foremost because I felt like there wasn't there there was room for more people doing that. Yeah, um, definitely. And it's I like teaching and I get bored really easily, so I like to make new things. So I like to just try stuff, and then once right. I figure out, I kind of geek out about it. So who right. better you have to share that with somebody? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really um, I totally get it. We just published a video today. Uh, called what is a laser and it's like a minute and a half long and it just tells people what a laser is like it's super short like there's somebody out there it's not going to be our most viewed video on the channel but somebody out there is like was waiting for that to be uploaded you know 100%. and i totally get like you definitely need to break things down really far for a lot of people that like just they're uninitiated you know right. and being being they're the person the that right now like there's got to be more <laughs> yeah, being the person that like you get to help them take the first few steps into the light that that must be really fun to do that all the time it's so fun especially yeah. when someone is like they're just terrified they're just you know like i had someone that was like okay i all i see is that people burnt a lens or they shattered their glass or they, they did this that or the other thing how do i not do that and i'm like oh that's easy we got you like <laughs> yeah yeah definitely it's not that scary what would you say your um like your home base is as far as your presence online? Like where where do you spend you, the most of your time like and um, kind of operate out of online? Yeah, so conversations on Facebook more now. It used to mm -hmm. be Instagram, but it's become more Facebook. It's easier to have, you know, multiple like a dialogue. Going. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah. YouTube is my primary like where I'm putting out content and where you can where I can give a a lesson in gotcha. a way that's thoughtful and planned for. Yeah. Yeah. We're just going to spend an hour plugging your myriad of things <laughs> online. So um, be okay with that right off the bat. So I just want to differentiate really quick. So you've got a Facebook page called things Katie makes, uh, but you also, it looks like you are part of the management of like a Facebook group called laser maker school. Can you talk yeah. about that a little bit? So I have two different groups that I'm running right now. Laser Maker School was the idea of just people generally will buy a laser with the intent of either it, like very rarely are you spending that much money and thinking you're not planning to make some money somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like it's really easy to find resources if you know what you want to do. So if you're like, I want to have an Etsy shop, it's easy to go say, okay, I'll go learn about Etsy. But if you're like, I don't know where I want to sell and I don't know how to know that. I like, I'm, I like to talk about more of that stuff. Like if you hate taking pictures, you can't be on Etsy. You just right. can't, right? But if yeah. you love talking to people, markets, local, there's tons of opportunities there. So this was more of a broad, like, okay, let's learn about your laser. Let's talk about where you can sell and how you can sell and help with those sort of things. Um, that's what that group's about. And then as soon as I got my Thunder Bolt, um, I started, I reached out to the guys at Thunder and was like, you're going to have a group that starts about this laser. So either I start it and you know me and we can talk about things that you're like, eh, make sure people don't say this or don't learn this or don't do this right. wrong. Yeah. And so I have the Bolt group, which has grown super fast. There's like 500 people in that group. And that laser has been out since August. Um, and that's that was your, was that your first jump out of Glowforge was into the, the Bolt? No, I have so I have a Nova 24, which you can just see the arm from. It's a and big then boy. I have a bolt <laughs> right next to it. That's awesome. What do you think yeah. of the bolt? How is it? I love the bolt. It so if I were going to buy one laser to start out with now, mm -hmm. knowing what I know, that's the laser I would buy because right. it has um the RF tube, right? So you don't have to deal with a chiller. You don't right. have to be like, there's not all these other places of failure that you could be like, wait, what happened? Why did that go wrong? Um, right. and that cool you, really <clears throat> isn't that the price of like a Glowforge basically or cheaper, but then you can also, it's got Z depth to do a cup. It can attach a rotary. Yeah. Like there's, it's in, I don't know. It's kind of a winner. Yeah. In it's my book. about $5,000 before the rotary and a Glowforge Pro 7. Yeah, I mean, well, that's yeah. a really good deal just from the RF tube value aspect of it alone. Yeah. yeah, because RF tubes are expensive. So um, that's Aren't yeah, the dot sizes that's finer solid. too in an RF tube? They, yeah, they have better beam quality in general, not just on dot size. I do believe they have a, a smaller dot size, but just yeah. in general, the beam quality is better. So you're getting, as you're throwing the, the beam through all of the different mirrors and it's finally coming out of the laser head, it's not it hasn't like expanded as much yeah. as some of the other beams so you're it's staying more precise through the runtime size of the job matters. especially on bigger ones and then what was the bigger one that you said you had i have the 24 so they're actually kind of similar because it's a 60 watt so right. comparatively to the 30 watt rf they're yeah. pretty similar and the bed size isn't a whole lot bigger um right. which is what part is the of the reason size on the bolt the 20, bolt 20 by 12. Right? Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I always look that stuff up. Somebody's been I, looking. That's what I'm saying. Small, small, uh, small footprint too for people that need a machine with a small footprint in their shop. Well, and it's great too because yeah. if you don't know what you want to do and you're coming from, you know, the people that I encounter a lot are people coming from crafting world. They're not people coming from woodworking, right? I feel like you can't right. like you easily transition from both of those places. These are people coming from crafting. So the idea that they're going to suddenly be like, I'm cutting half inch. I need a 130 watt laser is probably not the case. They want to like engrave keychains or make recipe cutting boards or right. make stamps. Like those things are all very simple to do and cups. I mean, people are like bananas on the tumblers. It's they're they're money makers, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I up until recent, like Thunder's been begging us to review one of their machines. And I've always been kind of like like wishy-washy on, on whether or not we get something. But the Bolt has really caught my interest, I have to say. Like it just between the small footprint and the RF tube, it just seems like a tight little package that wouldn't eat up a ton of space in the studio and it would be a lot of fun to play with. I'm glad to hear that you like it. Yeah, it fits nicely on a husky cart. So <laughs> like, it's just really easy. I mean, mine's yeah. literally sitting on my desk because I'm out of room in my space here. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, what, it's a desk, it's a desktop machine, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's kind of what it's for. Um, that's what's wild I'll, about it, dude. Yeah. I'll play so with you it for you, play. Alex. You can, you can send it my way. I'll play with it for you. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll get right. Uh, um, we have the link to the laser maker school, but not to the bolt group. Does, okay. Do one of you guys have it? 
the bull. I can find it while you guys are talking. I'm on. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I just want to make sure we get that in the description for people that are going to want to check that out because that definitely sounds like a good resource. Are you still the only group for the bolt right now? As far as I know. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. I totally missed that one. Um, The other thing, and this is kind of like a sharp left turn here, but while I was on your YouTube channel, which we're going to circle back around to, I saw your very top link was, was, is it an ebook? It's called Curve Simplified. Oh yeah. It's just like a PDF with some SVGs. So the first time that I heard about Curve, I was like, what in the heck is this? And then I saw that was another place where people just get really stuck and they're really like, they don't want to tackle it. They don't want to waste the material. And I always like to find uh, one, I'm a little bit lazy. Like I like to do things the fast and easy way. Like the right. idea of doing a material test that's like this big with all the circles, that's like, I don't want to do that. I want to do it as simple and as fast as possible. And so just really finding a way to make curve make sense for people. It's just a really simple little PDF and SVG. So you can do it yourself. So there's a link in the description for this, guys. And uh, here's the page. This is what it looks like. And I'll actually sign up for this really quick because I'd love to check it out. Yeah. Um, So I'm going to pull this up really fast. I should have been more prepared and had this ready to go. But hopefully it'll come to you. I think you have to confirm your email probably. Oh, no worries. (laughs) Well, then you guys will just see how easy it is. (laughs) There it is. Get unstuck. I don't know why Pat I'm recommending Flynn. Pat Flynn there, but okay. Is that is it automated? <laughs> yeah. No worries. All right. I will pull that back up in a second. I'm going to handle my email on the back end. You guys would do well to take advantage of me not talking for a moment because it's probably going to be the last time while we have, Let's have a party. <laughs> <laughs> well, Katie, what have you been up to since uh, the, uh, what's the oh, thing we did? LDX. There it is. I couldn't remember to save my life. What have you been up to since then? I know you said it's been, it kind of inspired you a little bit. Yeah. So LBX. So I've been trying to figure out, I really wanted to make my business education based because that's what I like doing. I think it's really fun. And, but I had been sort of struggling with exactly which direction to go because a lot of my videos that had done well, historically were Glowforge videos and then Tumblr videos were doing really well, but I knew I wanted to focus on the basics And I talked to a bunch of people at LBX that were just like, I just want to learn light burn. Like, I don't understand it. I don't know how it works. And so I started working on my course, which it has the silliest name, but it's easy to remember. It's called You Can Laser. And it's just really, it's project based. So you learn light burn while you're doing projects. So the first project you make a sign where you learn to engrave and score and cut. And you learn how to test your materials and you learn how to set up a really silly material test that has nice corners. So you can see, did I get burning in that corner and those little things, but also we'd repeat the tips and tricks that you do in light burn, like how you can shift, click a layer and see everything that's on it. Just like those little things that make your workflow faster. So I've been recording all the videos for that. I have some students that are going through it right now and they're giving me tons of feedback, which is really helpful. So I'm re-recording things that I'm like, oh yeah, I left that out. Oh, I didn't think about that. One of the things we were talking about the other day was if you're buying files, how do you know that the file you're buying is going to be good? How do you have any idea that it's going to work for you at your (laughs) level that you're at of design? This file, this file right here. A lady sent it to me and she's like, I bought it. It's a laser file. So I already got it for you. It's ready to go. And I was like, awesome. 25 minutes to make this thing laser ready. And I told her, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have to charge you for that lady. Like, I love you. But I like that. That was like a half hour of my life that I'll never get back. Right. So, Just saying. (laughs) And that's the thing that you, you don't know until you get a crappy file. And then you're like, oh, I needed to look for these things in the listing and I needed to figure that out. So even just those little things are things that the the students are helping me to be like, oh, I didn't think to talk about that. Or, you know, things they're getting stuck on that I'm like, oh, right, I forgot about that because it's been a while since I've had that error happen to me. Or we talk, you know, a lot about origins. How do you set your origins? What are the ways that you do that? What are the ways is that you the, like that? Is the course new? Yeah, I haven't even released it publicly. I was going to ask, because while we were stalking you online, we noticed that your website was like 
not all the way done yet. Yeah. So like if people were interested in participating, what's the best way to do that? Is it to reach out directly to you? Yes. Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Definitely. And that there's a contact me button on your page though, I think. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So like that, cause that's what I was saying. I was like, Oh man, she's got the course set up. But then I was like clicking it. I was like, I want to, I want to join. I was in the email. I, I also I have to say like, the Kerf guide. This looks super cool. There's a ton of instruction in here. Uh, I this is not. I was expecting like literally, and there are a couple like just SVG files, but you've got like a whole PDF in here. Well, I want to make sure. Like, like I said, I like to have the step by step of here's yeah. how to make it easy. Well, and that's what I was gonna say. So I watched like I three of this. your videos today, and that's one thing I can say. If if you haven't checked out Katie's channel. Um, she's very good at procedural explanation, right? <laughs> yep. Like literally, cause I was watching the one that stood out to me was when you were doing the full wrap tumblers, uh, because yes. I hate that. I, I, I had a lady call me and she's like, I need 20 of these. And I was like, cool. Let me give you a couple of people who do them better than me. <laughs> and I just passed that along because yeah. <laughs> like that, just the time it takes to do. So yeah. if somebody in somebody else is going to have a great day because of that. So I sent her along, but that's one of those things where like, if you can learn to do it and you can get the file set up, that's the biggest hassle. And yes. you did a good job of explaining how to set those up. So if you, yeah, you didn't I, go take a look. I, I definitely want to talk about that too. While, while we're on the uh, subject here is the channel. It's things Katie makes. It's right here. And uh, you guys can <clears> subscribe <throat> to it. There's a link down in the Excuse description. Me. And she covers like a ton of topics uh, in just, again, 46 videos. It's like really impressive to me that you've garnered <laughs> such a following uh, oh, with Sophie. It took us a long time and a lot of videos before we started to gain traction. And you're just like killing it right now, uh, oh, which is you. super impressive. And these look like a lot of fun, too. Like the stamp. My stamps have never looked that good. Your videos look so good in general. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, look at that one. Look at how good her videos look. Her production actually, quality is no joke. I yeah, know, for I'll real. And I can't. Oh. It, my internet is just not having well, it right now. Well, it's mostly just the cute, but the cute background. Like, look at that. Like, mine is like literally like this industrial mess behind I know, me. Yeah, and, like trash. My my it my. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm in a basement though. in a very my office. <laughs> looks like a Nine Inch Nails music video right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> And um, then look at the quality on the camera too. What was great is like right before, mm -hmm. like I told Alex I wanted to buy the one camera that Katie is using right now. And he's like, don't do it. And then I see her looking great and her videos look great. Damn it, Alex. <laughs> anyway, yeah, sorry. It's um, all good. It's okay. The other thing uh, that <laughs> I added to the description is the direct link to the Curve Simplified. So if you guys oh, want to awesome. download Thank that, you. yeah, it doesn't cost any money. It's free. Uh, yep. You just pop your name and email in there and you'll get the whole guide sent. I, it's sent right to my email. It came in in a nice little zip. So that's just a free resource you guys can pocket for later. So I'd definitely grab that. Um, and I lo like I love answering questions. <laughs> so yeah. if you find me anywhere that, you know, I respond on all the channels. I respond on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. Because I, like I said, I like to nerd out about this stuff. The reason mm. that the, the course is something to do is because I wanted to have something that really was just step by step by step. You know, if you try to do it on YouTube, one, you guys know this, YouTube will never show that stuff, right? It, like, right. you have to be, uh, yeah, I do a lot of that procedural step by step, but I have to keep it tight. And some of these videos are just long and they get really like they would be so boring outside of, I want to know this exact thing that I want to do. Somebody and like, yeah. sitting there like, Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it's step by step, but it's also, then it's at your own pace, right? You can just kind of, you can come back to it. You can go to it again when you need to go back to something like libraries. How did you do that? How did you save that thing? How did you do that? So that's why the course is there. Nice. I had a question for you. Oh, I love questions. <laughs> I know. So um, <clears throat> you basically on one of your pages, I saw it and I like, I can't, I'm trying to find it now, but it said you were a corporate something to now yes. a laser educator. What was it? Corporate. I call myself a corporate dropout. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what was it? Cause this is a lot of, this is a question a lot of people ask all the time and it's what I'm currently working on too, which is like um, starting a business with your laser. Like, what was it that made you feel like, okay, it's time to stop doing this corporate thing. I'm ready to pull the plug and 
like how did you kind of come to that decision and be brave enough to do it? Um, I, so I was in corporate retail for over 20 years. I worked for some very cool brands. Um, I spent a lot of time at J crew during like the heyday of J crew, which was really J. fun. Crew. Yes. And then <laughs> in my last job, um, it was during COVID and there was just a lot of commotion and change. And I started playing around with my Glowforge and was like, this is really fun. I could really get into this. And I had seen all these different educators in the cricket space. And I was like, there's nothing like that. And even if there is, it's so small and only, you know, one creator can only do so much at a time. So there's plenty of room for more people too. So I thought, let's just try it. Let's like see how this goes. And I, um, and I was doing that on the side. And then I got let go from my position. Oh, so they, okay. So they forced it on me and it was just good timing. And it was like, it sounds like you were like, oh no. They made the decision for it was you. honestly the best yeah, thing that could have happened. <laughs> it was a rough like, spot. It was, we were not mm. compatible at that point, the boss and I. So it was great. And it was just Thanks. like, okay, I'm going to give it a go. That's one of those we works. decided <laughs> situations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so, so that you was really your what laser it was. and fired it at them, right? You fired yeah. the laser at your boss, got it, nice. <laughs> but definitely that first, you know, that first year or two, it was really just like figuring out what I liked and what I wanted to do. And it was a lot of spaghetti at the wall, right? I tried a little bit of everything. There'd be things I'm like, okay, this I see this is really doing well based on all the Etsy research I've done. I'm gonna do this product. I did like little bracelets with um like little teeny tiny cute name tags and sayings and just totally bombed and i was like i don't i don't like building up a whole launch of products that's not for me but that doesn't mean that that's not for other people if that's the way they want to do it is a big launch and i know how to do it i know how to also bomb at it so i was like okay that's Nailed not it. for me but what do i like doing and i like <laughs> the relationships and i like you know like I said, I like helping and seeing someone be successful. We were talking a little before I have someone that I've worked with since she got her Glowforge, and she was like, I don't know if I want to start a business, but we started talking about her passions and she's really passionate about memorial ornaments and beautiful memorial things because she lost her daughter. And so she was like, I, people don't talk about her. I like having things that are memories of her. And I was like, then go for that. Build, make things that other people like you would want to do. And it just helped her to be excited about doing that. And it's been really successful for her. Well, She's been able to grow genuine too, Like finding that that's one of the things that I just wrote about too, finding your niche. And that's not really fine. Like, that not in that regard, but I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, like you said, finding what makes you happy and finding what you connect to because yeah. then other people are out there who need that. Yeah. So it's a good call. And so well, I just get energized by doing that with her and like talking through those things and be like, yes, helping people see in themselves what they maybe don't see. Yeah, that's huge. Is what I really love. And I also like connecting people to other people and things and tools and resources. So if it's like, my friend Brittany, who does wedding signage, who's only on Etsy, I'm like, you need a website. You need your own email list. But it's connecting her with someone who's like, I really want to learn how to build websites. So she can do it at a more reasonable price for her and help her to do that thing. And it's just, I, I enjoy all that stuff. When I, I, I see here, that, oh, sorry, go ahead, Kyle. I was just going to say, I noticed your storefront and all the products you were you were you have listed. Um, is that a Shopify site? How, how I you... have both. Okay. <laughs> My Shopify is a mess right now, but okay. I have it because of its connection to YouTube. So the goal is to like clean it up, make it connected to YouTube. But I have my Etsy shop. I had done physical products on there. And then someone asked me to make a template to share the template that I used for my wrap tumblers for my Stanley wraps, my full wraps with just the blank template. And so I put that up on Etsy and that like I can switch over to entirely digital only and do more sales just doing that like five templates than I did in any of my physical products. And so that was kind of exciting and fun. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's simple. It's just, but it's not. And the time it takes to get it right 
someone is willing to say, I don't want to spend that. I money. would absolutely do that. I'd be like, Here how you much go. is it? Get and I think I looked and they were like five bucks or something or Take like, money. yeah, I'd buy, I'd pay, I'd pay 10. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> buy it twice. <laughs> Cause anybody, I mean, talk to Kyle, he sets up all kinds of jigs and fixture oh. stuff. And like, he's the kind of guy that does that. And he's like, I can see him playing like eighties music, you know, in the background. Miesta, fiesta. Right. Oh. And it's like, he's like, and then I'd be sitting there like, so anyways, just saying. Well, and it lets people do the part that's fun, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have to make the template, then you get to just drop the designs in, which is the fun part, instead of like, okay, let's measure this 10 more times and let's yeah, run it yeah. again and again. Because you literally again. have to run it all night long. Oh, all night. dear Lord. <laughs> See, sorry. I'm, I'm going to throw another wrench in the conversation just because sure. I'm curious. Um, on your Instagram, you have a bunch of interesting links on your link tree i found your link tree which i have and we will add to the description of the video as well oh, man, right. um, this is good you're helping me find all the places that i'm like oh those are holes i need to plug and fix my it, digital totally here <laughs> um the uh you have a link to cmb acrylic oh, and yes. this looks super cool can you talk about them. cmb a little bit what's your experience with them what do you like picking up from them i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again so people can see uh what i'm drooling over right now but it looks like they have some really cool stuff yeah. So one of my, one of the other things that I love about the, just the laser community in general is how many, how as a maker, you're a small business, but you're also able to support all these other small businesses that support makers. Mm -hmm. And I found CMB really early on and I needed something that I emailed Melody, who's one of the owners about, and we became friends and she answers like every question I have about acrylic and I love acrylic. And she was doing like a mystery box for a while that I was getting that had all sorts of crazy things in it. But she, and they've expanded a ton into, they also offer bigger blanks now. So you could order something that maybe your laser isn't big enough for and then add to it. So for like the people who do those giant wedding signs or event oh, yeah, signage. So she'll do like the big arch and send you that. And then you can do all of your acrylic there so Does i have a laser off. cut the arch for you yeah so they have Ooh, they have a couple thunders nice. they have a uv they have uv printers so they yeah. can print anything you want on acrylic so you pick your pattern they'll print it on there for you um, <laughs> that's super cool so I'm you actually send her a list of names have her print that on clear acrylic with black and then just put standoffs <laughs> over it and be like i did it yeah, dude, these are so pretty. You can just like buy these and just hang them on your wall. Like, you don't, you don't even she, need to cut anything out of them. She that has would, a group called Acrylic Obsessed because that's how like you just become. Well, I actually did an unboxing, so I ordered. Yeah. They had a buy one get one free deal for uh, Black Friday. Yeah. So I jumped all over that and I bought like uh, I don't know how much, but quite a bit. I did an unboxing video here recently and did it because I like their stuff too. But the thing people don't realize is you can go buy a whole sheet. 48 yeah. by uh, 96. Yeah, 40 by, 40 by 96. And they can say what dimensions you want to cut down. Just buy the whole sheet. They'll cut it and ship it to you. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, like my mirror nine is 24 by 36, roughly, I can say, give me 24 by 36 sheets and send me the scraps. Yeah. And that's, and, you know, they, they work with you on that stuff. And I'm going to actually use them for a, um, I'm going to do more fundraisers for schools, get the school's mascot. Print it on the acrylic and make earrings. Bam. Oh easy product. Shut easy up product. Take before. my money. Blood Blood splatter? Oh, what's up, acrylic, Dexter? dude. That's so it. cool. I'm a Dexter that's fan, dude. <laughs> yeah, we need to dig <laughs> Kyle. Did you grab the link tree link yet? Because I want to make sure that we get that too. If not, I can copy and send it. Steve, but that copy buffalo, it yeah, the, that, those would be really flag. cool, like glass window style, like mm -hmm. Like designs yeah. you could well, and just lot. as that's backers on Christmas do. ornaments, like that's so easy because then there's no this painting, is, there's yeah. no nothing. That's you what just I use for all my on. acrylic. Just we use ours for, for all of our uh, backers for our ornaments and stuff. It's just no more painting. Yeah, and we it just adds a little bit of depth. Stuff. It gives yeah. it some depth and some contrast. Well, I'm like sure said, when uh, you find something they don't have, send it to them and they'll turn it. When people pick something up from CMB with your link tree link, does it help to support your channel? Yeah, like they, they yeah, get 10% okay. off, and then I can get 10% so, off when I buy my supplies, too. Oh, nice. <laughs> so make sure you guys use the link in Katie's link tree if you're going to go pick something up from them to try it out uh, to help support everything that Katie's doing for the community, because I'm sure that'll go a long way, too. 
Especially I love you with CMB. They ship free at 65 bucks, which Ooh, Dude, that's, that's, not nothing. that's, that's a pretty low. Threshold. How much are, how much is like their 12 by 24 sheets? Like 13 bucks. Is that what it says right there th from 13? Click something. So those are, those are 12 by 19. So they're, they're smallest. Hold on. Sorry. I navigated away. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm <laughs> looking at what's their smallest size. Cause that's we'll the kind of the fire one. See if it's better. Think, oh, that's cool. 12 by nine. I would make a Balrog out of that. Oh, you Straight could pick up. the core color too. It's kind of neat. Yeah. Interesting. And you can get it paper masked on both sides if you want all that. Is and, and you get the I think adhesive. The get yep. adhesive as well. Yeah. Oh, look. Hey, they're here. Hi, CMB. <laughs> yeah. CMB. I'm just like covering Katie's face. <laughs> well, I hope they liked my unboxing video I did today. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun, man. It's good. That's I've been using them. Them and uh, Smoky Hill. Oh my, yeah. Did like you send brain. that to editing already, boys? Yeah, I already posted it today. Oh, it, it went up? Yeah, I posted it. Where'd it go? On Instagram and TikTok. And oh, it's not nice. on YouTube shorts yet. I want to put it on YouTube shorts. I haven't watched that. Yeah, send it to tomorrow. me. I'll put it up on the channel. Yeah, yeah. that'll be good. Quick and easy. That'll be good. Yeah, they, had a, they had a great sale, man. Buy one, get one free. I couldn't resist. I was like, <laughs> oh, baby. And plus, we do our ornaments. So we had people at our show say, can you do this buffalo backer, but black and white? I'm like, yep. <laughs> I went on my phone and ordered it right then and there in front of them. I was like, it'll be in here. Gotcha. Take their order. That's, but again, like I said, it's, you can, you can get anything you want. If you're going to do a firefighter thing or Ooh. cops or whatever the hell it is, um, you just send them the file and they'll print it for you, man. The UV printer is awesome. Laura loved your video. I Thanks, love Laura. You. So I, I often will just get also um, clear and white. So white 3015 specifically, and <laughs> they call it out on their on their site because you can sublimate on that white really easily. Mm -hmm. I mean, as easy as sublimation is, but <laughs> with, you know, sublimate, print and cut, you can do a lot of fun things in your laser with that. Mm -hmm. And then clear, I spray paint the back of clear a lot. And then engrave. So then you get just like the cool inverse instead of when you need to paint something, you get that just really crisp look there. I like that. Have That's you really tried fun. that with like photos? Does that look good? I like, haven't done it, but I've seen people do that. I want to try that on the bolt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds fun. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, the photos on the bolt would be super dope. Yeah. The other thing that I've, I've been looking at too is your, you have like an Amazon storefront. Yeah. page with like a bunch of stuff you recommend you seem to be really into like resins and adhesives yeah i saw that too, like man. that is there do you have any like secret thing that you buy on amazon that just like has changed your world that you would recommend for other people to to pick up because it like looks like you have thing. a lot of just little bottles of like special sauces <laughs> yes so there's a it's true because or is it glues are like a big thing right it's me glues okay, are a great. pain um, my favorite is the yeah. Loctite, this one. Well, there's All Craft is a new one that you can get from Cerulean Tides. But this one, this Loctite one, it's not going to do it because I have product showcase off. You have maybe. to cover your face in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it goes. That one I really like. Um, but then also there's a non-toxic. So if you use like epoxy, but you don't want to use epoxy, you can use Crystalac. Um the Crystal Act Company, they have an epoxy alternative that you can use as a like a sealant. So if you wanted to do something on a keychain or something that you engraved and you wanted to put a sealant on it that was something different than a polycrylic, they have something called Grand Finale that I really love. Oh, but that's yeah, really cool. Like it's that's really cool. Because there's plenty of times where like I've put like rub and buff onto acrylic because the you know, like just Let's see if I have my bottle. <laughs> put it in there, and that'd be really cool to like actually cover that up and like seal it. Because I always tell people like, "Hey, be mindful of this, especially on presentation night. You don't want to stick your hands all over it because right. like then the person's gonna be waving and have like black or gold or whatever color you put on there." Right. So, and what's great about that is it's non toxic, so you can use it without needing any sort of PPE, and hmm. it's water based. So yeah, I do like all those kind of you things. You can huff it and not feel bad at all. Yeah. It's great. Oh my God. <laughs> so well, great. I mean, because you're forced to because of the small workspace. Yeah. HR. And that's I'm, not, I'm in like, an out of upstairs pleasure. bedroom in my house. So I like to think about what sort of things are flying around in the air around here. So yeah, you're a nice person. How safe. I just yeah. tell my kids, hold this. 
And usually it's pretty toxic. <laughs> well, if you guys have run out of things to click, uh, we also have added the link to Katie's Amazon storefront down in the description too. So you guys can check that out. With uh, It looks like plenty of things to spend money on. Yeah. Sublimation on acrylic, puzzle supplies. Are you a big puzzle fan? You like making puzzles? Do I have a puzzle supply? Oh, yeah. I did a video. <laughs> She's like, I don't know this what stuff. I, do? I don't even it's remember. Like, what? I hate puzzles. It's an, I, they're, <laughs> I puzzles. think they're fun. They're not my favorite thing to make. But I also think um, I think it's a place that people need to be. You have to be careful, right? If you're going to sell anything that's kids based. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude. For because sure. you, so there's a lot of regulations and things you really. Liability. Yeah, mm -hmm. need to be careful with. So from state I, to state, it's even crazier too. Like it's it's really nuts. Yeah, that's one I might stay away from. <laughs> you have some. I've spent like half of this podcast just like looking through all of your. You have so much stuff. There's so many. You can just click and click and click, and then when you get to something, well, she said like she gets another, bored. I know. I, I love it. There's like another branch that you can go <laughs> down and then there's Layers. like 30 more links attached to that and you can just keep clicking. I don't know. I might need to clean that digital footprint up a little bit. No, there's I like it. It's that. fun. It's like you don't yeah. know where you're going to end up. So for <laughs> Alex, who's ADHD, this is like great. <laughs> True. This is like, ooh, a piece of candy for him. It is yeah. accurate. Oh, you have a Pinterest too. Oh, ooh, no. Not really. Oh, no. That's on my list said, ooh, no. No, no. no. <laughs> There's like no. three links on there to like blogs from an old website I don't even have anymore because I tried Wix and mm. I hated it. <laughs> Wix is oh rough. Oh my gosh, it was so hard for me to use. So I switched over to Squarespace, but I haven't like started a blog there yet. Because Squarespace is very things. easy to use. Yeah. So much easier. Yeah. 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 All goodies. I found the Shopify. It looks really good, actually. I'm... Okay. Wait a second. It's random. I just saw it's something like that I physical want to products ask and <laughs> I think oh, it looks great. Digital's on there too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. It does. So, we should also link this. I will copy this too. It's just. What are we shop. talking about now? We're going to talk about the Star Wars Hotel. What did you find? No, I, I saw that and I was like, ah, we're all nerds. No one here is going to be surprised by that. Have like, you been wait, to the you Star like Wars Hotel? And Star Wars? I did. I, we went to the Star Wars Hotel. No, you didn't. How Was we it did. super cool? Look it was amazing. Idiot. Where Where <gasps> is it at? Well, now what? it's closed. Here, boys. <laughs> I haven't now, been there. Now, it, now it's not. Yeah, Wait, no. it's closed? Yeah, they, they had to close it. What? Why? They I they didn't market it well, so I, they couldn't sell it at the level that they needed to to maintain the cost. I mean, it was a two-day immersive experience. It's like a combination between choose your own adventure and like a cosplay convention, right? Like, Damn it. And it was so cool. So we have we have a 10-year-old boy, and he was nine when we went, and he was super into it. I mean, he helped Ray board the ship and, like, helped her hide from Kylo Ren. I mean, and it was just totally immersive and so much fun. So he had yeah. we had a great time. So what I found was it says, who does I don't think anything has ever been added to and removed from my bucket list so quickly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Made him feel so bad. Way to go, Katie. Thanks for coming on the show tonight. What a roller coaster. <laughs> no, I saw the elf on a shelf. So we just got our first elf on the shelf oh, ever. Wow. Yeah. I that that what like my wife literally, we've had it for what is today, the fifth. So on December 3rd, I was like laying on the couch falling asleep, and my wife was like, I forgot to move the damn elf. She's like, Can you go move it? And I like I said, What am I supposed to do with it? And she goes, Just do something cute. And I went, Nope, I'm a bad dad tonight, and I just rolled over because I'm like, I can't. Are you kidding me? And so she's like, I'll just do it myself. And I was like, You're the one who wanted it. You wrote the letter with her to Santa. You wanted that core memory. And so, <laughs> oh boy. So, yeah. Well, but like, if you tell me, Hey, go make it play Uno, I can do that. But I am not creative. I would literally give it a knife, and it would just be sitting at their bed, like with a bagel. <laughs> like, but they'd wake up with it like this, and then, oh, it's, oh, it's, it's our first year with Elf on the Shelf, too. I just, bucket up on the chandelier last night and mine just see. moved i like really wanted see. to set that standard low so that i didn't have to keep it up so all <laughs> he does is he moves to a different location that's it yeah okay that's but all i saw was you say i saw your post that said i'm thinking about making some elf on itself with a laser and i'm like oh that's actually not a bad idea yeah. so now no, people do really cute things like little message boards so that okay. the elf can leave notes 
I did see one it. file that said um, mood meter, the Santa mood meter. And it literally is like a smiley face. It's a wheel that just spins. And it's either a sad face, a grumpy face, a sa- like a happy face. And so like, this is what we're reporting to Santa. And I was like, mm, cause the other day they were fighting. Uh, All you hear is like, oh, smart. Leave us, stop it. <laughs> a little, a little reusable report card. Yeah. Straight up. Like, yeah. Ooh, today's, Clever. Oh, you got an F today. Oh no. I don't, so, yeah. I feel like I'm just welcoming. Like the second that I brought the elf into the house, I started getting like ghost videos on TikTok, you know, like hauntings <laughs> and things like that. Like really dark ass shit. I don't like the way it looks at me. I don't like, I don't want it in the house at all. It scares the shit out of me. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to link your, your shop. Katie has a ton of, uh, like digital files on here that look awesome. Um, and she's being too modest about it. So we're definitely going to link that. If you guys are in need of any digital files. Well, I do want to circle back to one thing though. She does offer coaching and it's very specific on her website here. So I see you do 30 minute coaching for, Oh, where the hell? Damn it. I lost it. Damn. I've just well, started doing that. Yeah, why don't you tell us about your coaching? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Darn, sorry. I've mostly been doing um, Tumblr, like uh, rotaries. People have been asking, like, help me set up my rotary. That's what I've done a few, like a few of those. Because mm-hmm. um, there's just like, I just want someone to walk me through step by step. Of, I don't want to watch the video and try to do it. I want to have you tell me while I do it. And so like, we just walk through, we go on FaceTime and, you know, I show them on my laser what they need to do. And then they do it on their laser. Now, granted, I have a roller. I do not have a grip, so I cannot help you with a chuck. I can help you with a roller. Um, but I, I also, think, you know, I like to be available if there's something that someone's like just stuck, like something we were talking about of how do I decide which shop I want to do? Like I told you, I've tried them all. I've, I had a Wix website. I have a Squarespace website. I have a Shopify store. Like I've, tr- I, I like trying the things out. And so I I'm good at helping people to say, these are things I enjoy doing. And these are things I hate. Like if you hate coding, Squarespace is really easy to use or Shopify is really easy to use. And Mm -hmm. if you never want to have to drive your own traffic, go to Etsy. So those are some of the things I like to help coach on. Um, Or if it's just like, I want to walk through Lightburn step-by-step with someone rather than watching a video and doing it. It's that kind of stuff. You're kind of like uh, you're kind of like a high school job fair. Yeah. You've got like a little bit of taste of like all the things and yeah. people don't know what they want. And then they go and then you tell them what they want and then they do that. I, well, I think sometimes two people need need some validation that they're making an OK choice. She's mm. the guidance right. counselor at school. That's who she is. <laughs> there you go. I see that you like finger painting. I have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> work with your hands. <laughs> like, have you ever had that thing where you just like. You need, you think you know the right choice for you, but all the things on the internet are telling you to do something else. Yeah, right? it's like, like my whole life. <laughs> everybody needs to be on TikTok. Well, not everybody needs to be on TikTok. If you don't want to be on TikTok, don't be on TikTok. But these are things you have to do instead. And so I think sometimes people just need that validation of like, it's okay to do the thing that feels good to <laughs> you, especially if you're building a small business and you want it to live within your lifestyle. You know, it, like when we're talking about Matt, like when you leave a corporate job, you don't want to work all the time. That's not the goal. How do you make a a career out of doing these things that fits the money you want to make and the time you want to work and the stuff you like doing? Do you like repeat projects? Great. You can crank those out. Do you not? You need big stuff like event signage. You need to get with your local wedding people. You need to be doing expensive things that you can do one time. So See, and I'm the other way. I'd rather do 300 of something and make a way smaller amount and just make 300 of something because like, but that's the kind of stuff that people need to know about. Like, what's your niche? Where do you fit in this market? How are you going to get that? Do you have access to that kind of stuff um, or the capital to actually purchase that many things? Right. I, um, I like that. I like so that yeah. people can even reach out to you just to find out what their options are, even if yeah. they don't know, like they know that there are options, but they don't know what they're choosing from. You right. know, and it, it sounds like you can give them like a full picture so they can make an informed decision and you can help them along the way too. I think it's similar to like, as you guys are doing more a scope of the different kinds of lasers that you're talking about, like not every laser is for everyone, right? There, mm-hmm. And there's not one best laser. No, they all have different everyone. jobs. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's the definitely. same with all these other things, but I think it's a place that there's a, there's a little bit of a void 
there, you have to go down so many rabbit holes to be like, okay, but everyone says Etsy. So I feel like I have to do that. Right. Well, you don't have to. I, don't. I use Etsy only for digital. I don't, I'm not shipping nothing. I, use, I don't want to I use Etsy only for shopping. That's yeah. <laughs> I literally don't. Yeah, yeah. You I don't think do I even not. have an Etsy account besides the one I set up to play with for this channel. <laughs> like, mm. I need to get one though. Ooh. What is Kyle what, hiding? What, what, what's going on there, Kyle? <laughs> Nothing. <Bad. laughs> oh my God! There's so many of them. There's more. Yeah, the bodies. That, that that'll be a discussion <laughs> for another time. There, there's a lot going on there. Opinions on the sculpt fun laser? Have we had a sculpt fun come through? Uh, we have not tested any of them actually. Haven't tested it. I'm just not scrolling one. back through chat. There's we were, a lot in chat. We were started to take a look at one, and it it just never came. So. Oh, here we go. I'm stealing Kyle's job. Um, what website do you oh, recommend me. to start selling your own products? That sounds like a perfect question for you. If you had to pick one, Katie, what where would you push people without knowing anything about what they want to do? I think they have to choose between. I I would say either Etsy or Shopify. And, and realistically, you can have both. Shopify connects very easily. I like things that integrate easily. I like things that just work, which is why I like my bolt because it just works. Right. Similar to why people like the Glowforge when they start, right? Because it, when it works, it just works. When it doesn't, <laughs> that's the whole other thing. But Shopify connects really easily to most of the places that you're probably going to show up online if you're doing anything social. So Shopify connects really easily to Instagram. It connects here to YouTube. It connects to TikTok, I think. It connects to Facebook. Like you can connect it to the whole meta universe really easily. Yeah. Etsy realized that and now has a coupon where you can, or a link where you can actually share and not pay the extra fees if you're sharing your own link to your own store and driving your own traffic. So they're incentivizing mm -hmm. people on Etsy to bring their own traffic. But if you don't want to worry about traffic, you can go on Etsy. But then you also do need to think about all the things that Etsy sort of requires to make your listing good, which is you must have 10 photos. You will do better if you have a video. You need them in this size and this shape where Shopify is like. And then there's like the well, game well, of playing with fun. like prices to stand out. But because like starting at $2.99, but it's not even engraved or in the country yet. <laughs> Like, wait, yeah, what? yeah, that yeah. is frustrating for sure. So, uh, like so a, many things. A big differentiator too, because I was thinking I'm not Shopify's biggest fan in the whole world. It's fine to me. Uh, other people obviously adore it, but one thing that I really appreciate about Shopify is its integration with like the legal and finance yes. tools, like QuickBooks, QuickBooks and yeah. um, TaxJar. I'm a big fan of tax jar for like managing sales tax and stuff like that. You don't really have to deal with that on Etsy. So that's one of the bonuses about using like a marketplace is that yeah. it's kind of Etsy's problem. But uh, Shopify does a really good job integrating those kind of tools as well. And I, yep. I think that's really important because that's the last thing everybody thinks about. And then they open their store and they're like, oh, my God, I have to be compliant well, with things. And it's a it's a big challenge. And with Shopify, it isn't so much. So yeah, and you can use their policies instead of needing to yep. you know, go buy a policies contract, which if you're yeah. doing on Squarespace, you might need to do. So well, and one thing that's nice. So the other thing I would add to that with Shopify, if you have a finished product that doesn't really need alteration, like for example, Boyce's uh item he was showing us before we got going, he's like, I'm making this for the local school. Cool. It doesn't, there's no personalization. There's nothing beyond like what it is. Then you can put that there. And that is the perfect thing for Shopify because people can click, I want four of these and that's it. But yep. the part where I feel like it's frustrating is with communication. Yes. Like if you're trying to personalize something, now you have to add in a, uh, the, the good news is there's apps and a lot of them are free, but it's just one more avenue of communication that you have to monitor. And so it's yep. one more thing. Um, but if, but once people get to know how to communicate with you and do that, like I've had a lot of repeat orders through the website because they know how to use it now. Um, and it's easy. So like when I have uh, a realtor who just buys, uh, I want this cutting board and I, they, you know, just, they tell me what they want on it done, you know? Yeah. So, but it, it takes, it takes a little bit of work too, for sure. Yeah. While you're doing all of this, like <clears throat> coaching and like 
life lesson learning and teaching with people that need a guidance counselor are you also like running a laser business in the background while you do all of the rest of that stuff i do very like minimally so i do a lot of local stuff and then like mm -hmm. random things that i'll put up that i'm like oh i made this this is fun i wanted i want to do this i'm able right. to to pick and choose but yeah i i do like testing things out so i will test a lot of stuff locally I only ask because um, Andrew said uh, self-driven marketing or not is the real question. And a few people yep. have agreed with that. And so I'm curious, like when you were confronted with that choice, what what did you find was was better for you and what you were doing? Like, do you prefer I, marketing things yourself or no. do you like being put in a pool? I liked that. I like the Etsy driving the traffic to me to help me, especially because I had no idea what my my niche would be. And I wanted to throw spaghetti at the wall because that, that's why I got a laser was like, I want to try it all. Yeah. And while I was learning, okay, I hate making this thing. Okay, but that's okay because it's selling well and it's highly profitable. Can I find a way to make it better? Um, but I think that Etsy helped me to find things I enjoyed doing that people wanted versus trying to drive the traffic to the specific thing and having to like, I never want to have to be on social media to feel like if I don't do this, I won't have customers. Yeah. For me, social media is there to like, I went on Instagram because it was just fun to share the pictures of things I was working on or things I was learning. And I, I have not been on it as much because I don't like doing reels. I'm a much more long form person. Like yeah. that's it. I like to go, duh, 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 duh. this is how you do this thing. I, the, me too. So reels, I, if that was my job and I had to do reels to make sure I had customers seeing my stuff, not for me. I would yeah. immediately just go local and like try to build up my B2B That's business. That's basically me right Yeah. Instead. Yep. Like I, I looked I, 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 I posted a video the other day on Instagram just because I was like, oh, this would be a cute one, a cool one to watch. Plus I was trying to tag specifically uh, someone who I'm trying to get to be a client. And so I posted my Instagram and it was very clearly a targeted message because I haven't posted since the last October. <laughs> so I was like, oh, but it got like 3000 views and like 50 likes in a day. And I was like, oh, that's cool. But like, you know, it's one of those things where, like you said, if I had to do that, that you need to hire somebody, man, at least for me, I stink at those things. Just and saying. I don't, and I don't enjoy it. And there are people who do yeah. who like are fine with having a camera on all day in their space. And like can make all of that interesting content and fun and the behind the scenes and they love doing that, then that's great. You're going to build up a following that you can drive your own traffic. Awesome. Do that. But if that's not what you want to do, don't push yourself to do that. Find a different way. You know, I mean, the you, path. yeah, you find so many people who've had so much success. Like you said, realtors, um, local bars, all the different things that you can well, do. And that's the thing local. with me, local, like it's a lot of, it's just been word of mouth for me. Fortunately, like I feel very lucky. Uh, like I, a lady, I felt really lucky. A lady broke her foot last year <laughs> and she said like, literally that's what happened. She called me and she goes, <laughs> I broke my foot and I can't go get the gifts that I always get. So I need 50 of these cutting boards. And so I'm like, okay, I can do them at this price for you. I see them on your website for 75. I can't do 75. We, like, she's like, trying to I'm like, okay, I got you. Here's the bottom line price. She was like, I love it. Done. Give me them. This year, I found out she's a regional manager for a really large corporation across the country. And she goes, I have district managers. I've told them about you. They're going to be calling you. And that was that. There's like 150 boards later in two days. Uh -huh. And you're like, oh, sweet. Mm -hmm. But it's because she broke her foot and was desperate, and some somehow saw a picture of a that a guy sent and her. Life be so, life in them. Yeah, you know. So, but like again, if they would have looked at my Instagram, it would have looked like a shadowy piece <laughs> of wood on dirt. <laughs> photo so room. Know, you never know. Photo well, that, room. I mean, Get like, photo room. That is the one thing I will say. Get that app because oh, photo room. What is that? Oh on? Is God. that like an iOS app? Uh, it's yeah. iOS, Android, and it's on your computer. I already have it. I still is it don't even pH it. or is it like edgy and uses an no, app? Photo room. Photo room. Do you remember I took a picture of like my cup sitting on my desk and then it was somehow at a baseball stadium? I and showed it, it to you. It does a good job like with the shadows and like. It's photo room AI photo editor. Yeah. 
Interesting. Real quick, while he's looking it up, Miranda says Matt thinks that's how everyone in New York State sounds, and that is actually how Alex does sound to me right now. It is. See, it is. It is. Um, I have not picked up any accents out here on the East Coast yet. So, where are you on the East Coast? I'm from Colorado, but I'm in New Jersey. Oh, Colorado, Jersey. So easy. What in the hell made you want to leave Colorado? We're we're basically neighbors. The armpit of America. <laughs> That's all right. I'm from Florida. America's I'm a New taint. Yorker. I have to talk shit about oh. New Jersey or of I'll get put do. in jail. <laughs> Christopher says, hey, yo. That's, that's You're on the wrong you side of the fucking Lincoln Tunnel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm Bridge and Tunnel crowd over here, right? Well, the Garden <laughs> State Parkway. Um, it was going so well. <laughs> then we got I had here. something really juicy to ask. and I've just Ooh, distracted by New Jersey. It wasn't really juicy. It was a stupid question, but... Um, <laughs> That's a bad sell. <laughs> oh, I see Justin lasers on here. That's fun. Hey, oh, Justin. Laura New, said, Jersey, uh, New Jersey. Whoops. Get the New Jersey shit off of here. Laura says, <laughs> you are the first person I've heard say that, Katie, and it's so refreshing. I always feel under pressure to, like, have to do one thing yeah. or another. And it, that's because, you know, we get the marketing and the algorithms that tell us that there's one path. And it's all, like, and those are the people who are selling their stories and that, that you'll find on my channel a lot of interviews and I like to interview people that have different stories. You know, I have one person who blew up with one ornament on Etsy and then I have another one that was a TikTok shop. But then I have other ones who are like, oh yeah, yeah, I realized I hated making all this stuff. So I just went digital. And it's just, it's fun to hear all these different ways to find success, to find the success that you want because not everybody measures success the same way, right? If success is like, I want to be able to be home with my kids and make enough money to pay for all their sports stuff. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, yeah. that's well, enough. This for was, me? Like the other thing oh. too, have a flexible like, schedule art. to spend time with them, right? Right. This job, this job is hard. It's a yes. lot of hard work and really long hours. It's not a nine to five. And one of the things that we used to talk about on the podcast all the time is like, if you don't want to do this, you're not going to succeed in the laser space or the maker space really in general, because you have to enjoy it to put in that kind of work. Yeah. You have, you have to, if you're miserable yeah. and you're trying to put in that kind of work, it's not going to materialize. So it I think it's show. even more so important that you're doing, you're choosing the projects and the paths that you enjoy yes. along the way, because if you're not doing that, I mean, you're just setting yourself up for failure. I feel like. Yeah. When you have to throw out the, you know, the fifth version of the thing that you ruined because your settings were off or you forgot to move the tabs on your rotary so that it didn't turn and it, yeah. you know, destroyed your cup. You you want to know you love what you're doing, not that it's going to ruin your whole day. Yeah, definitely. I saw that $2 sticker from uh, MI Laser Guy, by the way. Thank you for Thank that. You. Man. I appreciate it. Buy a laser. Make millions, they said. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, and the other thing too is like when your limit switch fails, not like knowing not to panic and freak out when your Z depth keeps rising and it's like crunching your bed, and you're like, oh my god, smack the emergency stop, calm it down, <laughs> it'll be okay. And my laser guy also said, there's also some reward for me that there is enough space for all of us to work here. The cost barrier to entry is high enough to limit the inrush of amateur makers. And that like isn't isn't true. I mean, like you can definitely get into this like a as a bucks. hobby and 50 bucks. It can it can grow into a business bef- before I think a lot of people are ready for it to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, be- because it just you wake up one day and you're like, oh, my God, I'm like doing so much for so many people. I've, I've seen I've talked to so many people that that have that experience. So you definitely can. I mean, Chris is here. Chris has been watching. Uh, this is my brother, Katie. <laughs> and uh, I brought him a, a couple really low end diode lasers and I accidentally like hooked him on making and now um his girlfriend is like has a full-time etsy shop and they just like totally fell in you know um and they they have low-end equipment that's poorly suited for what they're doing and they're doing it and they're making money you know so it's like you can definitely i think trip into this uh you know over the long haul but i think i think more the barrier to entry is the learning i think there's a lot 
Yeah, I think there's a it's a it's a steep learning curve, especially if you are a complete outsider and you've not used anything. I mean, even people with like cricket experience have like some kind of like foothold, but if you're literally just starting in laser with nothing, it's it's a very steep upward learning curve, at least until you get, you know, initiated with like basic laser software. What do you think about that? I think you have to choose which things you're willing to learn and what you're willing to spend more or less on, right? So if you if you get a less expensive laser that you need to learn all the different parts and align your mirrors and do all of those things, you're going to spend time there and you're going to spend time on the software. And then are you also going to want to spend time on design? So you have to figure out where are the places that you're willing to spend your time expense and your money expense. So a lot of people, it's like, okay, don't learn design right away. Just buy files, just buy good files. Right. Do that. Learn design when you're ready to learn design. And then you'll know what other softwares are out there. And if you even need a fancy software, if you can just do what you like to do in Lightburn alone. Yeah. And I think you can, if you're willing to invest time to learn, you can make almost anything work. You have to find the right resources, but yeah, that learning curve is steep. And I think there's a little bit of just, some of the tools have so much capability that you don't need all that capability. And so it can be intimidating, right? Like Lightburn is a really powerful, robust tool. I don't use, I don't know, 50% of what's in there. Yeah, me either. Yep. At it, least. Uh, and occasionally like I, I will need something from that yes. other 50% and I'll use it once and I'll like hobble my way through it and then I won't touch it again for another two years, but it's yeah. there, you know, so it's a complete software, but you don't need to learn that like the back of your, your hand, you know, it's, yeah. it's not you need to yeah. learn and what you need to know. If you, if you start a laser business and you, there are 10 aspects to this laser business that you need to really have down and you try to do all of them at once, you're only giving like 10% to each of those things and you're never going to, progress you know i really like that you got to pick one thing like give that 100 percent, get really good at it and throw money or other kinds of resources at the rest until you know that thing is done and then go to the next one and like eliminate expenses that way i, I think is it yeah is it, that makes sense to me and you got to figure out the with. variables mm, right yeah. like if you're using crappy plywood oh. on a laser that you don't know yet which thing went wrong <laughs> was it your settings or was it your crappy plywood? Like, that's hard. I don't Get know. that air pocket in the middle of a piece of plywood. That's always fun. Right? Like, people want to go with those, like, inexpensive things when they're getting started because they don't want to waste materials. But it also can be so frustrating because you're like, why didn't it cut through? And, and then, like, 70 people in a Facebook group are like, it's crappy plywood. You can see the glue. And you're like, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> Sometimes going with the wrong material that costs less ends up costing you two or three times as much because now you have to buy it two or three more times to get get that yeah. lesson. Well, there is something I, to be said for doing things the wrong way. I mean, that's oh, why sure. I know everything I know is because I've, I've screwed it all up. I never, you know, exactly. if you if you do everything right the first time and everything just works out for you immediately, what do you have? Right. You know, like <laughs> I don't. I, money you're not pushing yourself right <laughs> okay calm down <laughs> yeah like, it's, never, uh, i wanted well, to show yeah. this comment from adam lauderdale he said same hey, three hundred dollar diode now thirty thousand dollars into this dopamine trip that's yeah. how it goes yeah print and cut so fun yep yep just found out about it that's kind of what i'm talking about I like you, you need it's it cool. and then you discover that it's there yeah well and that's like this on the on the cup that i was talking about earlier like um changing uh nodes Right. Like it was just one of those things where it was such a simple thing to fix the file, but it's just time consuming because you have to zoom in, get to the spot that you do, zoom back out, make sure, click, 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 click. Um, and it's just one of those things. But the cool thing is now that I have that, this is a very usable, it's Mary and Bright and then Mary and Bride. And so literally I'll use that again. Don't worry. Oh, so sure. I, I told her I was like, so I can have this file. It's good. I said, did it come with a commercial use license? <laughs> She's like, yeah, it did. And I was like, cool so <laughs> just saying yeah all right well oh justin laser five dollar super sticker thanks, thanks justin. justin thank you justin we appreciate justin you has a, justin has a really good youtube channel if you haven't seen it go check it out yeah. he's yeah. filming um, it yeah justin's yeah. doing great right now uh you you're slated next man we got to have you on speaking of which uh i hate to do this to you katie but we're over time 
Yeah. And uh, I, I don't even, I usually give people like the last 10 minutes to, uh, to uh -huh. like talk about stuff. And I totally missed it because we were just <laughs> having a blast. So uh, what, if you, of all of the things, yeah. and we've covered so much tonight, uh, where's the like one place, if they're not going to click any of your other links, where's the one place you want them to go to like get the Katie Devlin experience? YouTube. The YouTube channel. Yeah. Because yeah. that's Katie where... makes. Yeah, my plan for the next year is I I probably am going to do a lot more live training on YouTube because nice. I, I find that that's actually quite fun. It um, is. And it doesn't require editing because I can just leave exactly. it up there. So um, in addition to uh, my regular um, videos, but yeah, so that's where most of my information comes out most regularly Perfect. when I'm not in course creation mode. Go sub. There's 50,000 of you. I think we can spare at least five of those uh, over to, to things Katie makes. So uh, at least 5,000 of you go down and click that subscribe button right now. We really appreciate it. Katie, yeah, I really thank you for coming it. on. Thank you for having me. I'm really looking forward to publishing our um, our panel interview we did with you at LBX because that was really that was fun so too. Fun. It's in editing right now. I'm waiting for some. I We have sponsor ads that we need to include in that because we were sponsored to get the 3,000 pounds of junk we brought with us actually to get it there was very expensive. So I, once those are finished, those panel interviews will start going up. Make sure you keep an eye out for Katie's. It was really, really good. 10 bucks from Laura too. Yeah, Thanks. Also Thanks one of our sponsors you know, habitually. Today. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Katie, it was a blast having you on. You're welcome back absolutely anytime. So if you have awesome. anything to announce, something cool coming out, or you just want to talk about how the Star Wars hotel was shut down. <laughs> Uh, just oh. feel free to hit us up. We'll get you yeah. back on for sure. <laughs> and awesome. uh, co-hosts, thanks for hanging out with me. I love you guys. And chat, thanks for being here live. We appreciate you guys. If you like the content, don't forget to smash the like button. Help everybody else know that the content here is decent. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. So you get notified the next time we go live. Uh, it'll probably be Justin Laser. We got to get him through here. Woo! And uh, yeah, that would be fun. I'm just signing him up. I'm not even waiting. I'm just like, you're in <laughs> next week, next Tuesday. You're He's coming got on. He's a boss laser like me. So basically we're brothers. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I think that's legally how that works. I think that's how it goes. He's building an X-Tool universe too, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, the LBX merch is still up on the shop. I still have not taken it down. So oh, you nice. can go get some of that. And <laughs> three months. I don't know. What else? Uh, <laughs> we we are publishing, I guess I'll just talk There's about like this. There's like this thing. We're already over time. Yeah. Uh, so we started publishing today and I posted more than one <clears> video <throat> today, which is a no, no in YouTube's eyes, but I wanted to get the first few out. Uh, when I saw you posted a second one, I was like, what craziness is happening I, right now? Yeah, I know. I posted three today just because I wanted it to feel a little more filled out. I really didn't like it. Let me share my screen really quick. Uh, but I have the first couple episodes of laser theory 100 out um oh, cool yeah it's very cool they're short little bite-sized episodes so we have the first chapter overview and then the first two lessons and Those they're good nerd stuff i love this this is this is going to be the chonky nerd stuff i'm sure. an engineer by background so i like this stuff beautiful mm -hmm. oh let's just yeah. drop that oh. on you should like boom engineer two pow, pow. yeah yeah, and uh, so this Laser Theory 100, is it has nothing to do with engraving. Uh, it's literally just about lasers it's and how awesome. they work, how they operate. Cat. So we're going to cover all the different types of lasers. And don't get me wrong, it's relevant to laser engraving and laser marking. And the, the contents of this course will help you understand things further along. Uh, but it, it's really to help kind of develop your sense of lasers in general so that's why i think it'll be really fun it'll be a certainly a departure from um uh what we usually do and i think it'll provide a really solid foundation for you guys because the next time you look at uh you know a diode laser and you're like oh this this diode laser uses a semiconductor i know what that means you know and it'll be like you, you cool. it'll give you some context so that'll be fun and if you guys want more of the like laser engraving stuff Kyle is actually working on applied laser, which will be our second yes. course available yes. that you guys will be able to take too. And they're just going up on the channel. There's some bonus stuff if you want to go sign up for the LMA, and we talk about that in the episodes. But uh, the base of the course will be free. So make sure you go check those out. That was my last plug. Katie, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. you all coming out. And we will see you 
in the next one. Uh, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs>